Hello everyone and welcome to this recording. Today we will be looking at the uh, exactlats pre-flattener commands. We will talk about uh, what they are, how they work, and uh, when to use them. Uh, to begin, I will go ahead and flatten these objects here and we will start looking at the pre-flattener. The exactlat pre-flatteners are the first stage of flattening for exactlat for Rhino with the second stage being the exact flat optimizer. Uh, the pre-flatteners are characterized by their very, very fast flattening, but they produce uh, unoptimized flat patterns and rely on second stage flattening the optimizer to produce your final flat patterns. The pre-flatteners are used for two primary roles. The first role is to remove folds or wrinkles from your pattern that may be introduced through either through patterning techniques or for you know, through the initial flattening. And the second use is to produce a flat pattern that has uh, as little strain as possible going into the optimizer. When we look at these flat patterns here, even though we just flattened these uh, meshes, we, uh, the flatten command uh, does use a pre-flattener, uses the press pre-flattener to produce uh, basically a projection of the mesh onto the XY pattern plane. And we can see we've got uh, a fairly high degree of strain on the mesh here. So we would probably use a pre-flattener to reduce the amount of strain on this mesh. So exact flat has uh, three main pre-flatteners uh, that are available in the exact flat toolbar, and they are the fracture pre-flattener, indicated by the broken glass icon. We have the pelt pre-flattener, indicated by the beaver pelt, and we have the CCM pre-flattener, indicated by the spider web icon. All three of them uh, do exactly the same thing. They all produce initial flat patterns that are not optimized, and they do—they all do it very, very quickly. Uh, the way in which they produce the flat patterns, however, is different. Fracture uh, works by selecting uh, an edge on the mesh, and it will uh, decompose and reconstruct the mesh starting from the selected edge. So uh, it works best along planes of symmetry, and it works very well on developable surfaces. So when we fracture this mesh on an edge very close to the center along an axis of symmetry, we get a pattern that has uh, greatly reduced strain and also looks fairly symmetrical. And we do it on the bottom piece here again. Uh, in the middle somewhere we get a pattern that uh, is uh, somewhat symmetrical and has reduced strain. So, uh, if we use the fracture on an edge though, we, we start to see some strange looking pattern results. Uh, it's no longer very symmetrical and in some cases we may even introduce some um, folds or wrinkles in the pattern piece here. So we'll also notice as we start selecting different edges on the mesh we get different patterns. Uh, so the selected, uh, selection point for fracture does make a difference for the uh, the pattern going into the optimizer. Not all the patterns are going to be good or acceptable. For instance, we, we wouldn't start optimizing with a pattern like this. Um, we'd be better off just to simply fracture again from another location to get a, a pattern that is much better uh, suited for optimization. Or alternatively, we would use a different pre-flattener. Pelt uh, works very well on all surface types. It generally works the best on uh, surfaces that have uh, complex double curvature. Uh, fracture and uh, CCM uh, may not produce a good pattern for those surface types and when that occurs then pelt is usually uh, the best tool to use. It tends to work on all mesh uh, surface types and it's a, a, a general purpose uh, flattener that tries to unwrap, uh, unroll a surface uh, based off its curvature. Um, CCM has three different modes available to it. Uh, the initial mode uh, produces uh, flat pattern that uh, flat patterns that tend to be symmetrical. So if the input is symmetrical, the uh, resulting pattern also tends to be symmetrical. And it's a, a very good general purpose flattener that uh, works well on double curvature uh, meshes with double curvature that have fairly low uh, vertex and uh, polygon counts. Generally speaking, if your mesh comes from one of the remeshers, then uh, CCM uh, tends to work very well so long as your uh, input vertex count is below 2500 vertices. Otherwise, the, um, the algorithm may produce unpredictable results, and you will most likely see those manifested as large spikes protruding from the mesh. 
The second mode for CCM is our minimal mode, and this works very well as a technique for removing folds or wrinkles from your pattern. So if we have a pattern, and I will artificially introduce some folds or wrinkles by manual vertex manipulation. So if we have a fold or wrinkle in the pattern, minimal works by attempting to uh, keep the shape of the pattern, uh, but it, it attempts to remove the folds or wrinkles. So we've done CCM minimal to this piece. It's removed the fold or wrinkle there and has preserved the shape of the pattern piece. So it is very good if you're in, your pattern piece is very close to the final shape but you have a few flip triangles or folds or wrinkles. Then you can use CCM minimal to preserve the shape and attempt to remove the folds or wrinkles. The last algorithm is a round algorithm and it uh, doesn't have a lot of uses. It simply turns your pattern piece into a round disc, so this works very well on uh, spherical uh, shapes or shapes that tend to be disc-like in nature, but it uh, doesn't have very many uses beyond that. Exactflat also has a number of pre-flatteners that are not currently in the toolbar, and uh, they are accessible from the command line. All Exactflat commands can be found by simply typing EF into the command line, and then the autocomplete will show the entire list of commands. You can also find this list in the uh, Rhino plugin manager by selecting exact flatten, uh, selecting the command list. Uh, some of the pre-flattener commands that aren't actually in the toolbar yet are is our um, uh, smart fracture command, and this works very similar to uh, the fracture command, but it tends to be a little more verbose with what it's doing, and it tends to produce nicer patterns. Um, with fracture, if we encounter a fold or wrinkle or a scenario that cannot be correctly um, pre-flattened, uh, smart fracture will uh, attempt to correct the folds or wrinkles before continuing, and then we'll continue fracturing from that point. So with uh, um, smart fracture, we still select the uh, starting edge, and uh, smart fracture will still uh, start fracturing from that selection point, but it, it tends to be a, a more well-rounded algorithm than fracture in that it will attempt to fix any folds or wrinkles that may be produced by fracture. Another pre-flattener that is not currently in our toolbar is our least squares conformal map pre-flattener. This works very similar to our CCM algorithm, uh, but it's just another algorithm for producing uh, an initial flat pattern. It's got two different modes. We can either have a free boundary or we can have a fixed boundary. And both of them produce different flat patterns uh, that tend to be symmetrical when using a fixed boundary. And they both work very well for um, uh, objects that have uh, fairly low uh, vertex and triangle counts. The last pre-flattener that is not currently in our uh, toolbar is our relax curvature command and again this has uh, four different modes um, they all tend to produce uh, flat patterns with slightly different uh, shapes and they all uh, work slightly differently the uh, relax curvature uh, works fairly well on meshes that have uh, a fairly high degree of noise in them so anything that's coming from a laser scanner that may have a uh, rough uh, surface, uh, relaxed curvature will tend to relax that curvature to produce a flat pattern. Uh, and it works very well on those. Um, they are not in our toolbar because they have not been tested as much as the toolbar commands. And uh, the, the primary toolbar commands here work very, very well. So we recommend using these. Uh, and if you still can't get a flat pattern from these, there are other methods to try to uh, pre-flatten your object before optimization. Uh, but the uh, other commands, uh, relax curvature, um, least square conformal map, and smart fracture uh, are all available um, if you wish to use them. Uh, we also have uh, the press pre-flattener is available. It's not in the toolbar. And this is the pre-flattener that is used uh, within the flatten command. And it simply produces a projection flattening. So if we select uh, pattern piece, it's going to automatically determine the best uh, projection uh, axis and it's going to project the pattern piece along that, that axis automatically. So in summary, Fracture works extremely well on developable or not, uh, near developable surfaces. It tends to produce uh, an almost perfect pattern when used on developable surfaces. Um, and it works by selecting the starting point 
Uh, smart fracture is very similar, but if uh, flip triangles or folds or wrinkles are detected during the uh, pre-flattening operation, it will attempt to fix them before continuing. Um, our pelt command is a very well-rounded flattener. It works very well on surfaces with double curvature, uh, whereas most other pre-flatteners will fail. Uh, so pelt is a very good pre-flattener to use. It's very quick, um, and uh, uh, so long as there aren't uh, topology errors with the pattern, uh, pelt uh, usually produces a flat pattern free of uh, flip triangles, folds, and wrinkles. And lastly, our CCM algorithm, when used in initial mode, works very well on symmetrical pattern pieces. It tends to give a symmetrical pattern if the model is symmetrical. Um, the uh, minimal mode tends to preserve the boundary, so if you have a shape that's very close to the final shape, but has a few folds and wrinkles, you can use minimal to produce a flat pattern with the same shape, but without the folds or wrinkles. And the last mode round uh, tends to work very well on disc-shaped uh, objects, but um, there aren't a lot of use cases for that, but it is still available uh, just in case. Thank you for watching.